said I'ma crush it. Call me the golden boy. Welcome to another exciting edition of Unsung, the nonprofit news and magazine show. Thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Anthony Walker. Hey, did you see that view from Mount Washington was ranked number two most beautiful? We brought you that view in our first episode, and since then have brought you more incredible views of our city. Today is unique. Do you like this view? You can have it. I'm at the Century Building Apartments in downtown Pittsburgh. Today, we are going to the Carnegie Library of Pittsburgh to check in with our library, Our Future. Then, we'll be taking a look at the Give Me Hope campaign in our Pittsburgh on Video feature. But first, let's take a look at the top stories from our region's nonprofits. Carnegie Museums of Pittsburgh announced that Eric C. Shiner has been named director of the Andy Warhol Museum. Shiner joined the museum in 2008 as the Milton Fine Curator of Art, and he has served as acting director since January 2011. Shiner was named acting director of the Warhol early this year after Thomas Sokolowski stepped down as director after a 14-year tenure. Today, in addition to his museum work, Shiner is an active writer, lecturer, and translator, a contributing editor for Art Asia Pacific magazine, and an adjunct professor of art history at the University of Pittsburgh. On Thursday, July 7th, Animal Friends held the fourth annual Liberation Day Rescue to offer a second chance to lost and unclaimed dogs who are slated to be euthanized at animal control facilities. Because of loud noises and outdoor activities, more dogs are lost around the 4th of July than any other time of the year. 31 dogs were rescued this year and were named vaccinated, bathed, and groomed at Animal Friends. More information is available at thinkingoutsidethecage.org. In a unique research study for the American Journal of Public Health, scientists have calculated the number of deaths attributable to poverty factors. The researchers used a method similar to how smoking was established as the cause of death. Poverty was defined as a household income of less than $10,000, a population in which more than 25% of people reported their race or ethnicity as non-Hispanic black was considered racially segregated. For the year 2000, the study attributed 176,000 deaths to racial segregation and 133,000 to individual poverty. Those numbers are substantial when you consider that 119,000 people in the United States die from accidents each year and 156,000 from lung cancer. The report argues that if 291,000 deaths are due to poverty and income inequality, then those things matter. And now, let's head over to Oakland where Christopher Whitlatch is at the main branch of the Carnegie Library of Pittsburgh. I'm at one of my favorite places in Pittsburgh today, the Carnegie Library main branch in Oakland. And I'm not alone. We'll hear about how the community has gotten involved with the Our Library, Our Future campaign in just a second. Having lived outside of Pittsburgh for a time, I truly appreciate what a treasure and an asset the library system is to our community. It has evolved throughout the ages to meet the needs of our neighborhoods. Above me is a sign that says, free to the people. Now what you may not know is that Mr. Carnegie, when he established this library system and made it free to the people, he didn't establish an endowment for it. And I'm sure even though he was forethinking, he never realized what the library would play in each person's daily life. And that's what we're going to talk about with the Our Library, Our Future campaign. So library is my major and I love library very much. It is in my life. I love the library because I come here to study a lot and it's a great place to meet friends and to hang out with them. It's sort of like a gathering place whenever we get in town. Our Library, Our Future is a campaign that we're running right now, getting people involved in how they can support the library. We're asking folks to support an initiative on the November ballot, which would be the equivalent of a 0.25% millage increase on real estate. Boils down to about $25 on a $100,000 piece of property. So we're telling people that's about $2.09 per month per household. Uh, cup of coffee if you get coffee, um, $25 a year, extra large pizza at Domino's. Um, we're getting a great response actually. Um, we're we're really talking about the value of libraries and people really get that in the city of Pittsburgh. We provide opportunities so that people who don't own their own computers, maybe can't access a computer, can come to the library and connect with all of the services that are available through our society. 
people say that they value the libraries um, not only as a, we hear a cornerstone of democracy, um, libraries provide equal access to information, but also for practical reasons. There's job and career counseling, um, early childhood education is really um, fostered here. Um, so both, both from an enlightenment perspective and also for a very practical perspective, people in the city of Pittsburgh love their libraries. Just one example of a, folk, a person that I've been helping recently, he stopped in at the library and he said that he needed to use our computers, he doesn't have a computer at home, he had just lost his job, he'd been at the same place for 25 years and had no idea how to begin doing a, a job search. Everything now is done online and 25 years ago when he did his last job search it was a world, a completely different place. So he's with us every day. He's working on his resume. He's checking out materials that will help him learn interviewing skills and how to actually find a job so he can move forward with his life. I'd like to tell you a story about a young girl who used to came, come to the library every day and we would give her projects to do. She would volunteer. The young girl came back to the library. She was in the service and she was about to be deployed overseas. And she was telling the staff how coming to the library every day and interacting with the staff and participating in the programs helped her overcome her difficulties in her home life and be the person that she was and is today. Currently, we have um, just less than two weeks left to get our goal of 10,000 signatures. Now, we only needed 2,800, and we've exceeded that, but um, we've had volunteers pounding the pavement across the city in every neighborhood in the city um, collecting signatures to get this question on the ballot. We also have volunteers hosting house parties to tell their friends and family and colleagues about this initiative. You can visit our website. It's www.ourlibraryoffuture.org. That's ourlibraryourfuture.org, and you can find updates about events happening, um, ways to get involved and volunteer, and ways to donate, of course. Hope, it is part of what drives Pittsburgh. Need more convincing? Then check out stories from the community from the recent Tell Me Pittsburgh and from other nonprofit stories. Joe Woes, please come up here. Um, my dad was always out of work. Uh, he worked at the mill. Now, growing up in the 70s again, it, it was really odd because uh, we didn't have pollution. Uh, at least we didn't call it that. Uh, they called it uh, economic development. And uh, I remember whenever I would ask my dad, where did you work? He would point to the mill. Now, I lived up on a hill in, in Braddock. We lived in, really, we lived in a shack. It was a very poor neighborhood. We had one bike, and we would take turns stealing it off of each other. I think a, a kid in, like, uh, Swiss Island Park actually owned the bike. But, but whenever we were up on our little shack on the hill there, he would point to the mill, and all he would see is this, this beautiful smoke. And every night, I'm not kidding you, I thought this was beautiful, every night the sky would glow bright red. And the snow would glisten and shine with cancer, frankly, was what it was. It was just horrible chemicals all over the snow, but as a kid, it was just beautiful and magical. When I was in kindergarten, I was not much of a student. For much of my life, I was um, both left-handed and dyslexic, which meant I was the spawn of Santa. Um, people didn't trust left handed so it took you a well. while. Um, it's okay. But I, I really struggled in school. Um, I, I really did, and I had an art teacher in kindergarten named Mr. Weaver. Uh, I'll never forget Mr. Weaver. He was the art teacher, and uh, he should have been a gym teacher, not an art teacher. He really should have been. He had big curly hair and like his Ewok living under his nose, and he was just a big bushy mustache, and he was this big burly guy, and um, he was our art teacher, and I'll never forget the assignment that really changed my life. Uh, we were having a parent-teacher conference, and he had assigned us to draw where we wanted to work and what we wanted to be when we grew up. I was in kindergarten. Um, I assumed he had ran out of macaroni and glue, and this was just the assignment that he came up with that day. Luckily for me, I had actually, at that age, knew what I wanted to be. See, my dad, when he would point to the mill, I would say, where do you work? And he would say, 
the powerhouse. Now, even at the age of five, I knew everybody wanted power, and my dad was the guy who actually made it. He made power. I thought, this is great. When I grow up, I'm going to make power. I will control all the power, just like my dad, and it's going to be awesome. I'm going to work in a mill. Um, who would have thought that, like, years later, the realistic profession was artist, and the unrealistic was skill worker? But that's how it worked out. So uh, I had to draw this, and, and the teacher was, uh, Mr. Weaver was very specific in his instructions. He said, I want you to use lots of color. This needs to be beautiful. This is your masterpiece. This is what your parents are going to see when you came in. So I, uh, I sat down. I grabbed one crayon, and I made a masterpiece. I drew the mill. Edgar Thompson works. The very first mill ever in the world, and I drew it. And it was magnificent. I had spent a full 30 seconds on it, but it was perfect. And I went up to his desk, and I placed it on a desk, and I said, I'm done. He looked at it, and he started yelling, yelling at the top of his lungs. What are you doing? You did this wrong. You can't follow instructions. This is typical of you. You don't know what you're doing. Go sit in the corner and wait till your parents see this. And I did, and I sat in the corner just crying my little eyes out. And um, when we had to come back, the teachers actually, uh, excuse me, the parents came in later that afternoon for a parent-teacher conference. And one by one, the parents came in and looked at their children's art on the walls, and my parents couldn't help but notice there was one piece of art missing. My art was not up on the walls. The teacher called them over and said, I want to show you what your son did. The assignment was to draw where they wanted to work, what they wanted to be when they grew up, and your son drew this. And my dad said, that is the best drawing of a mill I have ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. It's beautiful. I can't believe you want to be a steel worker. Don't be a steel worker. Be something else, but don't be a steel worker. That is beautiful. He then yelled at the teacher for about a full solid five minutes about the history of Pittsburgh and how steel had built this city and how could he not know that was the mill and he should be ashamed of himself. Well, Mr. Weaver did apologize, but it was in that moment that I no longer wanted to be a steel worker. It was in that moment that suddenly I wanted to be a cartoonist. Not an artist, a cartoonist. You see, because cartoons, there's no wrong way to draw them. It doesn't matter what they look like. Uh, a rabbit doesn't have to look like a real rabbit. A sponge can wear pants and talk. There's no <laughs> wrong way to do it. So I knew I was going to be a cartoonist right there and right then, and that someday I would come back to Mr. Weaver and say, look at me now. Well, believe it or not, 20 years passed. I had the great opportunity to become the first resident cartoonist at the Charles M. Schultz Museum. I performed at Jazz Fest New Orleans and museums and festivals all over the country. But probably my greatest honor is I got to go back to Ben Fairless Elementary in Braddock. And Mr. Weaver was still there. And I went up to him and I told him that whole story and he didn't remember any of it. <laughs> I sure did. The principal shook my hand and I went on the stage I did my assembly program, and the kids were laughing and cheering and smiling. And uh, as I stepped off the stage and went to shake the principal hand, Mr. Weaver leaned over to the principal and said, I taught him everything. <laughs> and he was right. <laughs> The Women and Girls Foundation announced the 2011 nominees for Women Greening Pittsburgh Awards. The awards ceremony will take place on Saturday, November 19, 2011. Fifteen honorees will be announced the week of September 12th. You can view the nominees at the address below. PodCamp Pittsburgh 6 will take place on September 17th and 18th at Point Park University. A kickoff event will be Friday night at Alpha Lab. PodCamp Pittsburgh is a venue where you can learn about social media in a social setting. Nonprofit organizations are welcome and encouraged to attend. Keep an eye on PodCampPittsburgh.com for more information. The Milan Golf Classic at South Point Golf Club brings a nationwide PGA Tour to the area September 1st through 4th. If you are planning on going, be sure to check out the ANSYS tickets for charity. Your ticket purchase can benefit an area nonprofit organization. More information at MilanClassic.com. 
Be sure to keep these deadlines in mind. August 1st is the deadline for Picture This 2011 Student Photography Contest at Manchester Craftsman's Guild. Details at mcgyouthandarts.org slash picture this. Also, August 15th is the deadline for Advancing Black Arts in Pittsburgh grant applications. Detail at the address below. Thanks for watching this episode of Unsung. Be sure to share it with your friends. To check out other videos and our Unsung Uncut series, please visit pittsburghunvideo.org. Let us know what you're doing in the community to make it a better place. Add your comments to this video. We want to thank Chelsea Pryor for the rooftop access and a beautiful view of our city. I've been your host, Anthony Walker. Remember, keep it awesome, Pittsburgh. I said I'ma crush it Call me the golden boy Cause it shine whenever I touch it Don't rush it The flow comes naturally Actually The whole hood after me Masterpiece I out in a pace car And these dudes fucking mad Cause they can't even find a day job I stay hard with or without Viagra And I said the flow crush Like the force in Niagara I'm after a major label budget But since I'm not